Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming back to hear our voices. Your person right now, your host, Kay Did Davis. And I have Grace on today. She will be telling us what she does. So sit back and relax and hope you enjoy the whole podcast. So hi, Grace. Hi, Kay Did. Thank you for having me. Uh, I really, you know, appreciate you uh, having this platform for us to definitely talk. Thank you for coming on. So I just want to ask you, what do you do for in homeless services land, I should say? Um, so I work, um, I manage, well, my position, uh, I work for Canva Homebase. So Homebase is a homelessness prevention program. So we're trying to assist tenants that are back on their rent or utilities and prevent them from going into the shelter and prevent them from getting evicted. So in our approach on homelessness prevention, uh, we're funded by Department of Social Services also, HRA, you might, you know, that, that, that's just similar uh, terms in which we, we've consistently used and they're our funder. So they fund our program and there's a home base in all five boroughs. So there's a home base in Queens, there's a home base in Staten Island in which Canva is one of the providers. There's a home base in the Bronx. Uh, there's a home base in all five boroughs and we're trying to assist tenants prevent them literally like i said uh from becoming homeless uh we want to keep them in their homes especially during this time of the pandemic it was really unsafe to have anybody uh out and uh going to even different centers and apply for different benefits so we definitely wanted to um inform tenants that if they're back on their running utilities uh, to definitely contact their local home base office to see if they might be eligible for assistance with uh, if they're back on their rent or if they're back on their utilities. That sounds great. So I have a question from what you have said that you help pay back rent. A lot of people have asked this question. I'm going to get to the question. Do you have sure. to pay any of those things back to the government or HRA or to Canva? So I'm just gonna speak on behalf of Canva Homebase, the Homebase program. If you're back on your, if you're deemed eligible first and foremost um, for Homebase services, cause we gotta do an intake. We have to uh, determine and assess if you'd be eligible for these services first from Homebase. So specifically with Homebase, after an assessment or intake, we're gonna determine if you would be deemed eligible for assistance with your back rent or you, your utilities or both. Or if maybe there's other things on there, maybe because it's sometimes not just always this clear thing of like, oh, I'm back on my rent, I'm back on my utilities. It could also be that you're unemployed or underemployed. Maybe you need connections with employment centers or workforce development courses. Um, it could be also that you are in need of maybe applying for future rent because we don't help with future rents. We help with if you're back on your rent and utilities. So maybe you might want to apply for a subsidy. We could help with the application process for the subsidy. We don't give the subsidy and we don't help find apartments. So I always make that very clear. We don't give out the subsidy and we do not help find an apartment. We are not real estate brokers. What we're trying to do is keep tenants in their homes. So we um, would let tenants know um, after being pre-screened or after being assessed if you'd be deemed eligible or not. And if you are uh, deemed eligible and you have rental arrears, uh, you do not, on the home base, you do not, I'm gonna stress on that, you do not have to pay home base back for those rental arrears or utility arrears. Um, but we do, do definitely want to make sure that this tenant is at a zero balance because home base is the payer of last resort. So we want to make sure that this tenant has seeked all of the resources and services prior coming to us. Because once they do come to us, we want to make sure that that balance is at a zero balance. And they do not have to pay us back for those rental arrears or utility arrears. So when you say um, all other resources, what resources are you talking about before you can get to Canva or what do Canva do to make sure you've done other things before they give you that help? Definitely. Well, Canva, first and foremost, 
We're a nonprofit with over uh, serving over 67,000 uh, uh, individuals and families in which we have a bunch of different programs. So we have, besides home base, they have, we have legal services, we have workforce development programs, we have refugee services, we have small business services. So home base is one of the programs within Canva. And like I mentioned earlier, home base is in all five boroughs. So we have different providers. For example, the other parts of Brooklyn that cover home base um, would be Riseboro and Catholic Charities. Um, like I mentioned, Manhattan, there's a home base uh, service for the underserved, or it would be Help USA. Um, so getting back to the point with the question that you asked me, prior to coming to home base, uh, we want to have those questions with the tenant. Like, did you uh, go, did you apply for public benefits? Did you apply for the one shot deal? And most recently, have you applied for the uh, eviction rental assistance program application? Because uh, for that recent application, um, they do also help with rental arrears. That started as of June 1st. So they help with rental arrears, utility arrears, and they could actually help with three months um, future rent besides the rental arrears. So that's one of the programs in which we have been informing tenants that prior to coming to home base, have you applied for this? Because then you might not need home base services. It's like, for example, with ERAP, you might be eligible for then complete uh, assistance with uh, the rental arrears, and then you wouldn't need home base services. But eligibility requirements are different with every single programs and applications that you apply for. So that's why we just kind of give everybody a little bit of the scope, like here are the services, here are the different resources, um, just see which one would uh, support or benefit you, the individual or the family more, um, or which one they should have access to first because they have like limited funding, which example, um, ERAP, the Eviction Rental Assistance Program, which just started in June 1st, the applications are coming in, um, we definitely would let tenants know that, have you applied for that? Because that might be a benefit that would be uh, preferable versus then, you know, and then we could evaluate if that one would be preferable for you to apply for that first, or uh, maybe move forward then with home base. So those are like one of the resources or um, information or services that we would inform tenants to apply for prior to coming to home base. And do you help tenants um, apply for the ERAP? I think I'm, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it properly, but um, for that application or no? Or they do it by themselves? We don't. They can do it by, that. Uh, you can do it on your own. But at the same time, we do refer to the actual uh, providers and people that have been contracted to do the eviction uh, rental assistance program, in which um, off the top of my head, I know two organizations that are doing it, which is Riseboro and um, Black Veteran Justice Center, I believe. So they are the two off the top of my head that I remember um, that are currently doing the ERAP applications because they did get the contract. So we can definitely provide uh, tenants that inquire with us. We could let them know which specific um, organization, nonprofit might be, do, are doing that application and how to contact them. Or we could tell them, this is how you also access it online if you wanna do it on your own. Yes, that sounds good. I have another question for the subsidies, right? What subsidies program do you do? Does like section eight, um, City FEPS, what do you help with subsidies with that? So with, that's a great question. So with the subsidies, we help with the, the community City FEPS applications. Um, we help clients apply, uh, start the application process, uh, the transfers, the renewals, um, or if they have like a, even if they have a question with a subsidy, I do recommend just go to your local home base office and see if you wanted to inquire more information about it. If you need it for a transfer, like I mentioned, a renewal, um, even just finding out what was the amount, we can help navigate them that. And then if, um, let's say a client comes in and they are interested or they we've noticed maybe during their intake or assessment that they might be eligible for a uh, city FEPS or FEPS 
uh, subsidy, we can uh, start the application process uh, to support them with that. We don't like give out the subsidies. We're not the person that's just like here, how, you know, you get one, you get one. It's, it's we're happy, helping with the application process. Uh, we're helping with if this uh, individual or family informed us they want to transfer with the subsidy, they want to, they need to renew the subsidy, we will be able to assist um, under that, uh, in that. But if you have a general subsidy that you're there any individual or family they're not clear or they have a couple of questions with, I would still say follow up with your local home based offices and we could reach out to our funder in which uh, maybe we, you know, we could get maybe more information and clarity for you pertaining to that subsidy. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, so I have another question because you said you do um, immigration. So, um, yeah. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? with your with the home base and also how does that correlate with the homeless services that you guys have so with specifically um well like i mentioned camba is one of the is the nonprofit that we work for and home base is one of uh the programs in which camba is a provider so in i'm just going to speak i guess in behalf with the home base the home base program if there are families or individuals that informed us that they're not eligible due to their immigration status. Uh, we definitely now have um, recent resources and um, available that due to the impact of the pandemic, especially, uh, there's a program in which it's called the uh, FASN program. It's called also the parachute program in which these services were initially, when it was first um, brought to us, it was a program in which it was primarily for tenants or individuals or families that uh, would have not been eligible for uh, public benefits due to immigration status, meaning everybody in the household, including the children. So it's not just for the adult or the primary guardian, it would be that everybody in the household was not eligible um, for uh, a, a type, maybe a subsidy or um, a type of assist, a be public benefit it, due to their immigration status. So we would uh, definitely want to know and find out, you know, if they're back on their rent and utilities. This information is definitely private as well. And in addition, um, we would be able to determine if they would be eligible maybe for assistance with their back rent and utilities on this specific program. Um, in addition, I wanted to add on, I'm going to sound like uh, repeating here, but repetition is the best form of retention. <laughs> um, so I uh, definitely wanted to um, also inform that with ERAP, it doesn't matter on your immigration status, you can also apply for the eviction uh, rental assistance program. And it doesn't matter regardless of your immigration status, you would be able to apply and uh, see if you're deemed eligible for assistance with that back rent or utilities. I'm happy that you said that because if you know if people, if you're not clear about certain things, people are just not going to know. <laughs> so I'm happy that you said that. I wouldn't have known that part of it either. Um, can you explain more about Project Parachute and give people an idea of what it's really in depth about? Sure. So um, originally with the Fasten program and Pro Project Parachute, um, this was due to the the wake of COVID. So it started in September. And with Project Parachute, we um, would now, it used to, when we first started originally, again, like I mentioned, it was for uh, tenants that uh, would not have been eligible due to their immigration status to public benefits, but now it's pretty open. It's open if you're maybe not eligible, maybe just for uh, public assistance or a specific subsidy or benefit. Um, and now it's, um, it's, but the primary uh, reason why um, home base uh, has this, or is, we're participating in this program is uh, especially due to, and this program cre was created was due to the impact of COVID. So we would have never met this family, individual or tenant 
um, if it wasn't for the impact of COVID, meaning that there was a decrease in their income or someone in the household was directly impacted by COVID. So therefore the uh, Fasten and Parachute program, um, it was, you know, it's the, the, the main reason why it was created and, and, and something that's available for tenants is because it was due to the impact of COVID. So meaning we would have never met this family, individual, um, if it wasn't due to uh, uh, the impact of COVID and the impact of COVID, how it affected their, um, their household composition or their income, a decrease in hours. I mean, maybe they, um, you know, unfortunately are, you know, unemployed due to the impact of COVID. So this is how specifically then the uh, parachute program was originated. And from there, we're trying to, um, contact tenants and let them know to uh, ask about it if um, they're going to their local home base office. I know you said earlier, I had to go back to everything you said about Sorry. not, you don't give out apartments, like find apartments for people. So when a person comes and say, I need, I have this, um, say example, city FIPS, but I need apartments. What do you tell a client like that? So we tell them that definitely, you know, it's it's not easy trying to find an apartment in New York City. And uh, recently the uh, city and uh, our elected officials have um, decided that they're going to raise the city FEPS amount because they're trying to match the subsidy now with how much rent is actually um is actually is actually in New York City. So we do um, let tenants know that we do not help find an apartment. And if you do have a subsidy, we can give you a part like resources on ways to find an apartment to encourage you to how to look for an apartment, where to find an apartment, you know, um, any type of uh, tools. And we even do trainings and uh, different workshops and teaching tenants on how to find an apartment so that it's, you know, different techniques and tools so that they're feeling like almost like they have tools ready in their toolbox so that when they're looking for an apartment, this is how we could show them how to look for an apartment. And do you think this way helps a lot of people find apartments in your opinion? Yeah. I mean, um, because the thing is, we always uh, tell tenants, and I mean, I've seen that because a lot of, um, you know, information we want to support the communities we serve with in letting them know of the different resources available and the ways in which, you know, we definitely grasp and understand it is difficult to find an apartment, um, especially in New York City. And that's why we want to definitely equip our tenants with knowledge and resources, um, letting them know their rights also as tenants and their rights um, as individuals looking for an apartment then as well too, that if you feel some sense of discrimination, um, we can connect you with Commission of Human Rights. Um, we want tenants to know if they are living in an apartment and they're feeling some form of discrimination, that they have rights as a tenant and rights as an individual and their families have rights then as well too. So we definitely equip, uh, we want to equip individuals and tenants with all these resources and uh, information because knowledge is definitely power and we definitely want to, you know, support the tenants in trying to be equipped with all these resources and all this information. Um, and at the same time, uh, you know, we are, you know, letting tenants know once you do have a lease, read it, read it like a contract, take your time, read it word by word, um, you know, pay be inquired, inquire about the rent guidelines board, see if your rent is going to increase or decrease or stay the same. Um, you know, it's all these information and uh, like different workshops and virtual workshops we're doing that we want to support tenants and individuals of all these different, in, um, you know, programs and resources and just things that we've inquired from the clients then we meet that we feel that we definitely want to equip uh, individuals and tenants with. Like, um, for example, if you're applying for the affordable housing lottery, let them know, like, look at, you know, talk to your local elected officials, let them know, um, find out if, you know, they're um, informed about the recent uh, apartments that are coming up in the neighborhood. Um, take a look at those HPD um, housing lottery applications, because if you're not in it, you can't win it. So, and if they need assistance with um, applying for those applications, you know, for uh, putting the information in those applications, we actually would be able to help with that. There are housing ambassadors that are in different 
um, in nonprofits, but Canva home base, we do have uh, housing ambassadors in which they could help with filling out the application for the housing lottery. It's not like, you know, we don't get an in, we're, we're not something like, oh, you're going to be guaranteed this apartment. That's a definite no. We just help with the application because sometimes it's just the conversation and understanding, hey, can I afford this apartment? Would I be eligible for this uh, housing lottery? And letting them know that, you know, we could support in that and just um, informing them of that information. So as you're talking, I'm writing down some stuff just in case I forget. I'm, I got so much like things in my brain and I'm like, oh, I don't want to forget this. So I'm putting it, I'm putting it down so I don't forget. So one of the things I put down on my list is that like, you people like, you know how we're used to the acronyms, but people who are listening to this podcast, in my mind, I'm thinking this is their first time hearing about this particular program. So you said HPD. Can you tell us what that actually means? Sure. HPD is the Housing Preservation. Hello? Yes, I'm listening to you. Housing Preservation and Development. Sorry. <laughs> <Housing> <laughs> no preservation problem. And, development. and it's a public, um, you know, it's, it's public. You literally Google NYC HPD and they can tell you about um, if they have uh, apartments that are available in your specific borough or area and what uh, applications they have maybe open. And if you would be, uh, if, you know, based on your income or household composition, if you want, you know, you could create a, 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 a an account online and apply for um, not just one, you could apply for multitudes of affordable housing lottery options. Um, also, I would also pay attention to those because some like recently at Section 8 opened up in May and the applications were open for fee for anybody to start applying for uh, Section 8. They closed it now, but I mean, that's just showing to prove that it could happen. It does happen. Um, also, I mean, they're also, you know, if you're, if, if let's say you're having just trouble in paying your back rent, you don't want to leave your apartment or you can't at the moment. Um, and it's just due to your background in utilities, you know, there, you know, all of us are promoting the emergency rental assistance program, which is a New York state program in which uh, I'm, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but if it's due to, again to the impact of COVID, um, the impact of the pandemic, and if you're unable to pay some or all, some or all of your rent due to the pandemic, uh, this is definitely a uh, program that might be able to assist with that. My other question for you is that with the age, because you know teens go homeless or it could be any age that's homeless, what's usually the age that you can apply for these programs that you can start as 18 or is it younger, like if you get emancipated or something like that? I mean, um, normally what we've seen in our offices have been age 18 and up. Um, and we're just gonna ask about what, what the household is. And I feel that um, we're gonna take the case. It'll be a case by case. I can't really answer that just because sometimes like you mentioned, uh, if the, in the, the the teenager individual, they are like, you, they're, you know, the, they became the head of the household or they are, you know, we're going to try to find what resources, if it, they're not eligible for home base or another, you know, could support them. So uh, to answer, I guess, then that question, it's a case by case. So it, depending on what's the situation or what's going on with the individual. So I have a question. This is like before, if you go to a new place and like from one place to another, do you guys pay for moving? That's like a random question, but it just popped into my head. I was like, probably, I know HRA pays for moving and stuff like that. And I know some home bases, I don't know if it's all pay for like furniture. So yeah. do you guys pay for that also? So we, if it's not, I mean, it's also, like I said, it's a case by case. It's if you're deemed eligible, we might be able to assist with furniture assistance. Um, sometimes we might be able to assist with first month's rent or the deposit, either or, not both. Um, and again, it's all depending on what we, uh, the goals and what was um, discussed during the intake process. And we'll take it from there and see if they would be deemed eligible. If we're helping with, um, uh, let's say, 
furniture assistance, you know, we have to get quotes and we have to, um, you know, see, you know, we have to do, a, now it's been a virtual home visit just to see like, what are the needs of the, the individual if they're first moving in and what do they need? Like a table, a bed, um, like, you know, primary needs in for that household after we do a virtual home visit. And um, yeah, we, we would take it from there and then find, let the individual or family know if they would be eligible for this benefit. So a lot of things that you've been talk you've been talking about is like more of a like prevention, which is very good to have that kind of service because we definitely need it. And that's why I have you on this podcast because a lot of people need to get this information and be able to get a better life for them and their families. So does this prevent like because most of it's prevention? Does it work while just before you go to shelter or while you're in shelter or after shelter or all three? To be honest, because to me I think the answer is all three. But you are the star of the episodes. So I want to make sure you can answer the question. I appreciate that. I'm far from the star. I just want to spread the news. <laughs> so um, what's home base? So we are trying to prevent tenants from going into the shelter. And if there are tenants that have exited the shelter and they're in their new apartments, that's also the tenants that we want them to definitely discuss, uh, you know, reach out to home base then as well. So in one aspect, you are correct. Any tenants that are back on their rent or utilities currently, and we want them to maintain and stay in their households, home base might be able to assist them if they're back on their rent and utilities. Now, the other aspect in which, which are aftercare services in which we wanna help tenants that have exited the shelter, they're in their new apartments, but let's say either they feel like they're gonna fall back on their rent and utilities, um, they maybe need just more information on what's going on with their subsidy, they need a renewal, they need a transfer, they need something pertaining maybe with more information on their subsidy, or just finding out you know, the local resources within their new um, neighborhoods, like sometimes even to the local grocery store or supermarket. Um, daycare center. So those would be called considered our aftercare services. So it would be tenants that have exited the shelter and they're in their new apartments and they might just need some additional support and assistance from home base because they don't want to go back into the shelter. We want to prevent them also from going back into the shelter. So um, that would be considered then our aftercare services in which we would be able to see if the um, individual or family would be eligible for home base services. If there are tenant, uh, if there are individuals or families that are currently in shelter or street homeless, unfortunately, home base won't be able to assist because within the shelters, um, there are uh, currently uh, housing specialists and uh, social workers that are currently then uh, assisting tenant or individuals and families that are in the shelters or that are deemed street homeless. Um, so what exactly what you said, we are um, preventing tenants from becoming homeless and tenants that have exited the shelter and they're in their apartments and feel like if they're back on their rent or utilities and they don't want to, and we want to prevent them from going back into the shelter, we would be able to uh, deem if they would be eligible for home-based services. The reason why I asked that question, I think is very important for certain people who's, who's in a shelter right now, because at one point, my housing specialist for myself, because as you know, guys, if you're new here, I used to be homeless. So that's why one reason why I'm doing this podcast that um, I didn't even have a homeless specialist. So it's like, yeah, you're in a shelter, but sometimes people are either not doing their job or they don't have a person in that position to really help you. And they'll hand you off to a certain worker, but because you're not really their case, they don't put that much interest in what's going on. So if I need an like, example, some applications, the lady didn't want to fill out for me. I have to try to do it myself. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if I was in a shelter and I needed help, I wouldn't, it's like, you feel like you're stuck because nobody's helping you. And it's like, sometimes it's, this stuff is hard to figure out. It's not like a basic application. But sometimes, you know, people who are doing it every day know how to do a certain jiggle to get things right. Or like when I was doing um the NYCHA application, I didn't know I had to update it every, like at least once or twice a year. I just had it there like, yeah, I'm in a system, but I really, they kind of put me to the side that I wasn't doing it every year. So that also can um, affect your your application. So that's why I asked that question. I thought it was very important to people to know, even if you're in a shelter, um, I would say advocate for yourself. And I would, it, it sounds bad. If they're not helping you, call 311. That's what I've done. And that's what honestly helped me out in the shelter because if they're not doing their part and you want to get out of there and get a better life for your family, you're going to have to do what you have to do. 
Definitely. Um, I, I always say in um, even our talk, like even when we're talking to clients, the best advocate for you is yourself. At the same time, um, like we have also advocated for tenants, like there's situations and they inform us like, my housing specialist hasn't done this or we haven't, they haven't contacted us. And sometimes this could be a loss in translation. Sometimes it's genu generally like, you know, they just need assistance with certain applications and we, we can try to advocate on their, on the individual or family's behalf. Like, hey, this is an urgent situation. We are all funded by Department of, you know, Department of Social Services, which is DSS, which is falls under the umbrella of HRA, um, Department of Homeless Services. So if we could put it under their radar and definitely what you mentioned, call 311, because that, you know, in, in explaining like what's going on and you need it, it you know, they, we get we get referrals from 311 too. We get referrals from like the mayor's office and from directly from our funder, letting them know like, hey, you know, this, this inquiry came through, uh, you know, what's going on with this case or, you know, we need follow up with this. Um, and, you know, we are right now, it's been very busy, <laughs> but cause it's, it's like if there, the housing situation was already bad before the pandemic with, uh, with, 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 you know, tenants getting evicted and, and rental rears, utility rears, and it's gotten tremendously worse. And a lot of tenants, this is their first time maybe even accessing some of these programs. And if there's a current housing court case that was prior to the pandemic, you know, it might have gotten egregiously worse. And we definitely want tenants to contact us, home base, contact 311, contact and let us know, you know, what uh, information you need. Because accessibility, um, we all started working uh, remotely um, recently that are doing a hybrid approach. So it's more or less, you know, us trying to navigate and inform that, especially to the individuals or families, you know, we definitely want to see, you know, it, it's also all a learning process, but at the same time, we want to make sure that we support um, as best as we possibly can. And when you were talking, I just sometimes forget that, especially with the pandemic, some people, like some people have been doing this thing like their whole life. They grew up in the system, not saying that's right or wrong, but some people have done it longer than others. And some people, for, because of last year, everything happening, this is their first time even being a part of a public assistant case. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So for mm -hmm. people who are not used to it, it's gonna be so much harder for them and not understanding HRA will take forever. You might not get food stamps right now. <laughs> like, Here's the thing though. Um, I, I'm gonna, you know, I do definitely want to talk about there has been this program in which um, we definitely advocated early on uh, during the pandemic because um, it's uh, in which the individual or family can access and apply and they don't need anybody. You don't. You didn't need to go to an HRA office because we were trying to prevent from um, tenants or individuals going into offices because it was dangerous. You know, COVID and early on, we didn't know what was going on or you know what you know what what the interactions were going to be, and we were trying to you know we're still tr we're still abiding by CDC guidelines and New York Forward guidelines. So um, there's this website access.nyc.gov in which you can apply for food stamps directly through it, um, apply for the one-shot deal, apply for benefits, cash assistance directly, medic Medicaid renewal. You can do all um, making an account and logging into this HRA account. And his, it has been extremely helpful um, to tenants, individuals, families that were trying to apply directly for SNAP, cash assistance, Medicaid renewals, the one-shot deal. You know, they could literally apply for this, uh, the cash assistance application through this account. They actually, in the individual or family making this account, they actually have to give us permission in order for us to view what the benefits are, you know, what, what was the application accessibility to. So I recommend definitely it's called access.nyc.gov. Um, to see if you might be eligible for uh, a SNAP or directly applying for this with, without going, you know, not needing to go into an HRA or Department of Social Services office. She's definitely right. I can say, I feel like all the programs I just done, so I know firsthand how it works, but I apply initially on like in person because I've been on it for a while. But now 
because of everything happening, they used to only, I feel like only did snap. They had to do like public assistance in the place and go to like Brooklyn and do all these things. But because of the coronavirus, which they honestly probably should keep the system up because it gives you the office space probably could go for something else or I don't know, but it does work. You can apply for everything there. You could apply for fair fares, which is basically the Metro card when you get accepted into the program. So you can apply for food stamps, as she said, all these things. And then they'll call you over the phone. And they also have an app. So when you're accepted or not accepted, they'll tell you on the app after you do that first process, you download the app, you use that same sign-in information. And you can see if your case is rejected, when you get your payments, you can upload documents and all those things on the website, Actually, I mean, on the app. So when you do your application on the website, you have to get the app anyway to upload the information. I don't, I don't ever see a place where you can upload it on the actual website, but I do use the app to upload everything. And then they send you things in the mail saying that they receive the documentation from you. So they make sure that you know that they got it. Um, before the pandemic, I feel like this app wasn't, they weren't getting the information properly, but I think because they, what it was, it was a newer app and I think it came out like 2019 or probably before that. And the workers there didn't really know how to work it. But now with the pandemic has forced them to learn how to use the tool. So now they're using it all the time. So you can do anything through that app, to be honest. I believe your fair hearing, if you have a thing going, I think you see that on there also. So everything this app has for you to make sure you're, is, you know, smooth sailings. They do have glitches sometimes, but it's technology. A lot of things have glitches, but it does make your um, process go smoother than before. You have to be there waiting, watching TV, sleeping, eating sometimes. It's, it's, stress, it's, more, it's less stress than before, to be honest. I mean, most recently, just to, uh, you're definitely right. And um, you actually can also, uh, as of last week, apply um, how the applications uh, are now being accepted through accessnyc.gov for the emergency rental assistance program, the ERAP program. As of the 14th, I think as of last week, you can use this uh, tool. Uh, definitely everything you mentioned, um, you know, on, on in the accessibility for this tool with benefits. And now you could also apply, uh, do the application for the emergency rental assistance program. So it's almost like kind of a one-stop shop in which I'm always promoting because I was like, you're literally doing this from the, you know, your computer, your phone, you know, uh, and accessing this instead of going into a physical office, especially, you know, for the safety of, of families and individuals, that's priority. Trust me, if you're a first time goer at this whole getting benefits, you might think the computer is like, you know, whatever, but trust me, it's much better than going in the office. I don't know about now, but before it's, it was a jungle out there, <laughs> to be honest. It was a lot of people coming there because they needed help. And when people are needing help, they're almost at their wit's end. They some, most times don't want to come there to get help, but they come because they know trying to do better for their family. So you don't have to be around a lot of people. You get to just being in your own bubble, your own house, and doing it from your phone. So I think it's an excellent tool that they developed better than they had before and kind of work out the cl- the kinks. It's like they knew it was gonna, something was going to happen crazy and they needed this <laughs> this whole app thing, which um definitely saved our tails this past year. A lot of families got to be able to use it. And they send you a lot of emails too, like different things when I think the Section 8 thing came out in the email, different things what they're updating or telling you about and what you can be eligible for they send you in emails also not so much text if I remember but I know emails and you can find all your data in the the app that they have on your phone I think it's for Android and for Apple I don't use it on my Apple devices but I know I have used on my Android yes I'm that person I still have an Android (laughs) and I'm happy with it (laughs) and and something definitely you touched on and mentioned that is really important Um, you mentioned like email and contact It is so important now to definitely put the best number to contact you from or your, the individual or family, the best name, you know, your name, like make it clear, spell it properly, um, the best email, because it's one of those things, you know, you don't want to get that call missed. You don't want, you know, not to be receiving that email. If, um, you know, your primary language is not English, definitely let them know. So then they're like with home base, for example, we have language line, we have accessibility to, uh, you know, individuals and, and managers, supervisors, myself, I'm bilingual. So it's, I, I, I'll translate cases. I will translate an inquiry or a referral and that's coming in. And if, you know, English 
English isn't your primary language and you're more, and, you know, any individual or family is more comfortable in talking and speaking another language, we definitely want to make sure that that is not a barrier. We want to definitely make sure that individuals or families are still accessing, you know, the same information and resources, whether or not English is your primary language or not. Um, and but it's definitely also important to put like English is not your primary language, which language you're most comfortable in speaking in or discussing information or reading and writing. Um, also, you know, the best contact information, this number and email and, you know, uh, you know, and, and everything, everything. <laughs> yeah, she made a wonderful point that they do everything in different languages so don't feel like oh this is probably for only english speakers if yeah, you can speak english but you don't understand as fast it's probably a person who's native to only english and you could speak spanish Chinese, like you know any of any language they have opportunities for people to translate for you don't feel like you have to miss out because you don't understand something they have somebody who's there to explain it to you they have just a lot of resources it might sometimes be hectic they have to do like back and war back and forth paperwork and things like that, but they're definitely there to help you. So don't be discouraged. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what I definitely could say about HRA. You know, I didn't really come here for HRA today. We came here for Canva, but you know, they're all honestly just intertwined to kind of help people. Sometimes the ball does get dropped, but if as long as you advocate for yourself, if the ball gets dropped, you know, you'll be there to kind of, no, it's over here. I need help and still in this area and just advocate for yourself. That's what I can honestly say about that and these programs and HRA yeah. and all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. I mean, um, yeah, Canva, Canva is a great nonprofit organization with def with a lot of various programs. Um, I, I guess, yeah, I, I'm, you know, HRA comes into it because they are a funder with home base. So home base is one of the programs, which is also funded by HRA, that is within Canva. Um, and then Canva definitely has a lot of amazing programs, after school programs for kids. We have schools, we have workforce development programs, like I mentioned, legal services. Like that's one of the things that definitely, let's say we have a home based client and they've informed us that they need legal representation. We'll refer them to our Canva legal services program um, in house and let them know on um, what's going on. Or if they have a Section 8 voucher um, and they're trying to find more guidance pertaining to that, we'll refer them to our tenant support services uh, program, which is which is within Canva. Um, so, so with Canva, yeah, we have various amount of programs and we are definitely trying to support individuals in every single way and aspect so that they can can um, you know definitely uh, thrive and grow, especially during this time. So you know it was it's 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 been you know pretty hard uh, with everyone's been impacted due to the pandemic in various ways, and this is why we have all these programs and resources to help any indiv you know individuals and families definitely thrive and uh, maintain you know housed and informed and supported. So like she was saying, um, you can basically say Canva is a community. It helps with your children after school. It helps you with your, your anything with law. It helps you with housing. Not housing like, you know, finding it, but they just try to give you resources for that in case you're low in rent and you are backed up. They help you with that. So it's, a, it's a basically a well-rounded situation, you know what I'm saying? To kind of help you, to help you find a job, basically help you with resumes and stuff like that kind of area and they give you training for that also to make sure you could do good interviews. But some people think they could do good interviews when you go to to do a practice it's like you're saying the wrong things and you're wearing the wrong clothes. And you're like, that's why I'm not getting a job. And Canva helps you with all these resources. And it's trust me, people say it's easy to get a job between what field you're going in, but um they can help you with different things like that. They even have like a when you go in and do the the stuff for the jobs, they give you to a certain person that helps you out. I'm gonna call them a caseworker. I don't think that's their title at all, to be honest, but they help you make sure your resume is fine and it's up to snuff. Cause you know, resumes and stuff change. I feel like every couple of years, the way they want to see it in certain places and making sure it's not crowded and things like that. And they, as I said, help you with doing interviews and they do these classes, but they also try to get you connected to different people who are in different fields who you might be compatible with. So it's not, if you're trying to be a construction worker, they're not going to put you in a, to be in, working in Target. You know, you probably could still do those skills, but they try to put you in stuff will probably will be good for your, for the skills that you do have. 
you know what I'm saying? So they definitely try to help you with a lot of resources out there and just take advantage. Don't feel like you are alone because a lot of people are doing this. You're not the only one. It might feel lonely because I feel like those things are, you feel very lonely and you feel like, why do I have to go through this? But everybody has problems one day in their life. And if these programs are out here, it's out here for a reason because people need the programs. So take advantage of it and don't feel any way about it. Do you have any last words that you would like to say? Um, first and foremost, thank you for having me. I really, you know, appreciate, uh, you know, your, your, just your platform and just informing, uh, anyone and everyone about the different resources and, and information, especially about our programs and our agencies. And, you know, I wish there were, you know, more people like you putting, you know, this, this information to the communities we serve. This, this is definitely a great opportunity. And I really am just honored and thank you and, uh, grateful for uh have you know for you having me here today thank you uh, yeah yeah i just and uh just my last thing is like uh erap apply 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 <laughs> you guys just want to apply apply for the eviction if you are back on your rent or utilities apply for the eviction rental assistance program because um don't get me wrong also contact your home base office also declare a um a hardship um it, housing hardship as well, so that you're, you know, you have your rights then as a tenant, so your landlord doesn't evict you. Um, the eviction moratorium has been extended till the end of August, so the, you know, don't, you know, you cannot get legally evicted unless you're like currently had a case then in housing court, but still contact Canva, find out about legal services, contact Canva to find out about home base. Like you mentioned, even the other resources that Canva definitely have, we have like even to the point, small business services, we have uh, foreclosures, so many different programs like you've mentioned. Um, but in, in the home base aspect, I'm just gonna stress if you're back on your rent and utilities, contact us just to even get some more information. If you're back on your rent and utilities, apply, apply, apply for the eviction rental assistance program, uh, ERAP, definitely apply. Uh, use, a, use accessnyc.gov. Um, and there's a home base uh, site in all five boroughs. So just um, if you don't know which one it is, call 311 and they'll definitely uh, lead you to which home base site, which uh, would be, uh, you know, the, with the one that's closest to you. Um, and thank you again for having me. So I just really appreciate a platform uh, to definitely, and all the questions and any follow-up questions, you can definitely, you know, contact me then as well too. I have another question. Is there a deadline for the ERAC program or is this open for right now? Not yet, <laughs> you know, but there is limited funding. So that's why I'm just like, they haven't given us specific, I haven't gotten the clear on when, you know, what is the deadline they haven't given us. So that's why I'm just like, just apply before they even <laughs> inform us on what exactly there's a deadline. So that's why I, I'm, I'm telling. And then also I do ask and plead uh, just for any individuals that are applying, even with home base and any of the other programs have a lot of patience and leave a voicemail, leave an email, um, because this is a numerous amount of calls coming in to even my colleagues um, that are doing the ERAP applications, that are doing home base, that are doing the home base, uh, you know, services and case management services. Um, just have a lot of patience and leave your name, number, and voicemail, and they'll get back to you. It's just an overwhelming amount of uh, individuals are applying for this, and we're just asking and you know requesting for definitely your patience. Do you have any contact information or should they call like 311 to get to the local one in their neighborhood? Yeah, because I, I specifically with Canva home base, we cover a large portion of Brooklyn and Staten Island. But what I do recommend is definitely could call 311. Also, if you go uh, Google like uh, HRA home base, it'll give you the list and you can literally put your zip code and it'll tell you which specific home base office you could definitely contact. Because since it's, it's all for all five boroughs, I don't want to just shout out one home base office and not give, you know, the, the definitely the recognition for the other home base sites then as well. I understand. Thank you for, for coming on for me, Grace. Thank you for sharing your information. Thank you for giving out just information people can use in their life, even if they don't use it now or tell a friend now, might, maybe they'll need it in the future. Hopefully they won't, because you know, it's very scary going down that path, but it's good to have the information handy when you need it. Guys, Thank you for coming to Hear Our Voices. Hope to see you next time. And I hope that you learn a lot of information that could help yourself or somebody else. 
invite a friend next time. Thank you. Have a nice time. Bye.